Michael Battelle, president and founder of the Fatty Liver Alliance. We raise awareness about the risks, causes, and complications of fatty liver disease and help those already diagnosed with muscle dementia by advocating for access to approved treatments and care. Today, as my very special guest, Dr. Swarinjit Basin is a diagnostic radiologist on the West Coast of the U.S. Dr. Basin, you firmly believe, and I've seen a lot of your videos, that Massold is under our lifestyle control and that it can be reversed. In fact, on your X page, uh, bracket Twitter, I could say it that way now, you wrote as your bio, radiologist reversing poor metabolic health from first principles thinking. So I want to understand more about that too, but what do all of us really need to know about preventing fatty liver disease? Yeah, thanks. Uh, thanks for having me and uh, uh, great work that you're doing in this space, which is really needed. I think this is uh, the silent epidemic of today, uh, fatty liver disease. And this is where, you know, uh, I've done a deep dive in nutrition. And since there's no pharma therapy for reversing uh, fatty liver, we actually really need to help our patients and uh, members to really reverse this through dietary changes. And the diet is uh, the key thing that we can really focus on. And, and sadly, you know, uh, physicians don't really get that education. So I'm here to make it very simple uh, for physicians to understand what we can really help our patients. And then at the same time, uh, let the patients make the changes themselves and empower the patients. Well, what you're going to share with us is so important because there is no way on its own that fatty liver disease, muscled, whatever we're going to call it, is going away. In fact, it's it's growing exponentially around the world. So, you know, we welcome what you have to share today. And thank you for that. Thanks. Thanks. And yeah, I'm a body imager. So I do uh, read a lot of the CT and ultrasounds uh, on patients. So this is where I want to share a few slides sure. uh, here. Let's jump right in. So, you know, uh, some people in the audience, some physicians or uh, patients might be wondering, why is a radiologist talking about metabolic health? Uh, you know, we're usually the ones in the dark room reading uh, uh, x-rays, CTs, ultrasound, MRIs. Uh, but I've been in practice for over 15 years now on the West Coast in the U.S. and seeing, seeing a steady rise in obesity and its associated diseases. And I think fatty liver is a big one that really stands out. So this is my why. The other thing, the other why is cancers in young patients. You know, I do diagnose a lot of uh, um, breast and rectal cancers in their patients in their 20s and 30s. So this is where I said, uh, you know, I did a deep dive in 2022 on how can we tackle these issues from first principles thinking. So first principles going to, you know, getting to the root cause. What is the root cause that is causing uh, these things? And then, you know, I want to share couple of things, you know, images. What I'm seeing uh, uh, while I'm sitting in the dark room, this is a CT scan. Uh, here's what normal liver looks like. Um, it should be the same density as the screen here on the screen. And with fatty liver, what happens is the, the liver density actually decreases and it gets more closer to the subcutaneous fat, as you see right here. So this is how we diagnose fatty liver on uh, CT. And then this is ultrasound. Here's a normal looking ultrasound of the liver. What happens with fatty liver on ultrasound is it's going to increase in echogenicity is how we diagnose on uh, ultrasound. And sadly, if we do not uh, reverse some of these cases, some of these will go on to cirrhosis. Uh, uh, so this is really important that we catch it here and start reversing it early. And this is this is the elephant in the room. Uh, I think we should all be talking about this. Um, insulin resistance is the root cause uh, of uh, poor metabolic health. And um, as you see, fatty livers right here, and you can just go around the circle. This actually affects all specialties in medicine. So, and you know the the NAFL to uh, muscle uh, uh, nomenclature change in 2023. I think it's a really welcome change. Um, uh, metabolic dysfunction associated steatotic liver disease, muscle uh, off the tongue. This actually more accurately describes the root cause and how we can reverse the disease. So, and what is metabolic health? You know, I, I think I would like to define this for everyone. Uh, it's defined by optimal levels of five markers without using medication. So you have a normal blood sugar, normal triglyceride, normal HDL. Uh, blood pressure and waist circumference. And, 
and this is from July 2022 uh, from Tough Nutrition. Only 7% of American adults have good cardiometabolic health. So this is where we can really help 93% of our patients uh, through what I'm going to show, you know, simple dietary changes. And again, root cause of poor metabolic health is insulin resistance, or you can say hyperinsulinemia. And I'm just going to share three simple steps that can be utilized with any diet. You could be keto, you could be paleo, vegetarian. I'm not telling you to change because we all have different cultures and backgrounds. So our diets are um, very diverse and you should stick to that. Just follow these three simple principles. Um, and this will help reverse the insulin resistance and fatty liver. And again, metabolic syndrome, uh, it's a cluster of health conditions. When you have three uh, out of these five that uh, you have metabolic syndrome. And this is where, you know, just gonna call it out again, visceral obesity, hypertension, uh, increased blood glucose or insulin resistance, and then high triglycerides and low HDL. Notice we're not talking about LDL or total cholesterol in this, so we really have to focus on these uh, triglycerides and HDL numbers. And here's uh, here's my marketing. Maybe maybe we can have you as my patient. Uh, if if you were coming in and you had a fatty liver, uh, I can show you how to reverse it. So. Sure. Uh, here's the three simple steps. The first step, I, I would say avoid some of these seed and vegetable oils. These are made with a lot of chemicals and, and they are really uh, cause a lot of um, inflammation in the body and uh, oxidative stress. Uh, so here's, uh, I'm just going to name them canola, corn, cotton, seed, soy, sunflower, safflower, grapeseed, and rice bran. This is what we really need to get out of our diet. Um, Use the healthier alternatives according to your um, diet choices. So uh, this, these are the six simple six that I usually recommend. Olive oil, avocado oil, butter, clarified butter, which is ghee, beef tallow, and coconut oil. So uh, according to your dietary lifestyle, you can choose any of these. Um, second step, low carbs and sugars that use healthy sources of fat. So again, we're... CDC is telling us we're eating and drinking too many added sugars. Sugar is a problem. And this is a great curve that I, you know, I want everyone to really remember and imprint in their head. Here's a blood insulin response, carbs and sugars, huge insulin response. And we're all addicted to carbs and sugar. So we all actually have to call it out. Um, and we all need to tackle this and help our members uh, really reverse this. Uh, protein is in the middle, uh, you know, uh, always good to get more protein. Fat is a flat line. So healthy fats should not be feared. It's what we really need to, in healthcare industry, we need to let folks know. Uh, avocados, healthy fat, good. If you're going to get yogurt, get the full fat yogurt, not the low fat, because the low fat is usually going to have added sugars to it. And this is a trick that I've heard uh, many times, and it's very powerful. When you go to the grocery store, stick to the periphery. That's where all the real food is, the single ingredient foods. The stuff in the middle, 90 to 95% are um, ultra processed uh, foods. And this is where Americans are getting 60 to 70% of our calories from ultra processed foods. So when you go into the aisles next time, I wanna, I want you to feel a little tap on your shoulder. Um, <laughs> that's Dr. Basim telling you, hey, be, put your guard up. You gotta be careful. It's like, don't do it. Yeah, I got it. Yeah. I remember that one. Yeah, I think that one is a, a catchy one. <laughs> and then the last one is intermittent fasting. I think this is a very powerful tool um, that is underutilized in healthcare. Again, we've been marketed to, you know, six small meals are healthy. This is not healthy. And I used to do this before I learned uh, um, this nutrition. You know, I used to think small snacks in between was healthy. No longer do I do this. Uh, this is a... a this is what most adults need is two good meals in an eight hour window. So skip breakfast or dinner, whatever's easier for you. And this will actually help reverse the insulin resistance. It'll help you lose weight. It'll reverse the fatty liver. And this is sustainable. If anyone's trying to lose weight, this is what I tell them. Low carbs and intermittent fasting. Very, very powerful and it works and it's sustainable. Uh, I've lost uh, probably 10 to 15 pounds of visceral adipose tissue uh, in the last year that I've been doing this. Uh, so Great. very, very powerful and it works. 
And again, uh, we'll show this uh, um, studies, you know, I'll go over this and we'll put this in the show notes. I'll send you the link. So, you know, if anyone wants to dive into this deeper, uh, this is Sydney diet heart study showing group consuming vegetable oil had a 62% higher rate of death during the eight year study compared to the group eating less vegetable oil. So this is why the vegetable oil really toxic. We have a lot of data. Another uh, Minnesota coronary experiment over several years. So we have a lot of data. We just need to get this out there. Um, participants who increased their consumption of corn oil and margarine had 86% more heart attack. For those age 65 or older, a higher risk of death after four years. So really powerful. And then again, I think some, some of my patients, they say, oh, butter? Butter is okay. Are you sure, doc? Is butter okay? This is a really great um, article, uh, state-of-the-art review article from the Journal of American Card College of Cardiology from August 2020. And I'll just point out some of the highlights. Several foods relatively rich in saturated fats such as whole fat, dairy, dark chocolate, and unprocessed meat are not associated with increased cardiovascular disease or diabetes risk. There is no robust evidence that current population-wide arbitrary upper limits on saturated fat consumption in the U.S. will prevent cardiovascular disease or reduce mortality. So I think this is where we really need to get away from the restrict saturated fat to just a food-based uh, approach. You know, eat whole foods. Um, uh, that really, really makes a big difference. And then again, proven benefits of fasting. Uh, this is a great article from New England Journal of Medicine, uh, 80 different references, and they showed all the clinical applications, obesity and diabetes, cardiovascular disease, cancer, uh, neurodegenerative disorders, asthma, MS, and arthritis, surgical and ischemic tissue injury. So this is a, a really great one for um, a docs to review, and uh, it shows the power of intermittent fasting. And again, uh, I always like to give a, a couple of reliable sources, resources for patients. But these are a couple of websites, uh, dietdoctor.com slash low-carb. You know, they have a beginner's guide to low-carb. And then the same website with intermittent fasting. They have a, uh, intermittent fasting uh, guidelines. And, and then a big name in uh, intermittent fasting space is Dr. Jason Fung. He's uh, based out of Toronto, nephrologist. Uh, great uh, gentleman. And uh, actually invited him to our medical group last year. He came and talked uh, with the physicians in our group. The topic was intermittent fasting demystified. So we need to demystify this uh, powerful thing that, you know, here's all the benefits of intermittent fasting. Too many to, you know, for me to describe. And again, uh, low carb is key uh, according to your dietary preference. So use, uh, I use the whole food uh, approach. And again, a lot of medical specialties uh, in healthcare. Uh, this is where I would say, uh, you know, all of us can get behind this insulin resistance um, uh, and really tackle this uh, problem. And again, uh, fatty liver, you know, we can have all the specialists, you know, we can have the neurologist uh, help with the stroke, uh, obesity doctors. Um, and this really does link uh, everything together. So I would say diet is really key. 80% of what you're going to impact is through the diet, the exercise uh, and uh, um, other stuff, I would say is 15 to 20%, but 80% is diet. So diet is really key. And that's why I really focus on the biggest aspect where I can uh, really make it the biggest difference for my patient. That was awesome. You, you covered, you covered uh, all the key points that anyone would ever need to know about about eating healthy from the types of foods to when to eat, how to eat. Uh, I had some clarifying questions, if that's okay, based on some of the things that you talked about. So you didn't specifically sure. call out fructose versus glucose or, or sugar. Would you say fructose is one of the worst uh, culprits? It is, uh, it is uh, worse than the other sugars, but I would say we all need to cut down all sugars all sugar. in all forms. And, and this is where I would say, I always tell my patients, uh, try to keep the liquid calories out of your diet. So the soda and the juices have to go, especially if you're diagnosed with fatty liver, those things have to go. So stick to the water, black tea, black coffee, um, but the, all the liquid calories must go. Yeah, co coffee is always recommended now, except without 
ideally without for sure without the sugar but ideally without the cream too that's a tough one i'm working on that but it just tastes so much better with the cream than it does with no cream but <laughs> and, and i think that is a really big hack actually i, I didn't yeah. think i would be able to drink coffee without cream and sugar i used to put a lot of it but now that i know the benefits of intermittent fasting in the morning i'm just drinking yeah. the black coffee and uh, and have oh, a nice uh, lunch and then uh, dinner within a eight hour window and it, it actually is sustainable long term that's the key. And you're uh, you're walking the walk, right? You, you you lost. You said you're doing what you're telling other people to do, which is which is fabulous. And uh, and you you just uh, showed us that it can have an impact even in a short period of time too, right? You said you just did it a little a little bit of time. And, and I'm hearing stories from our staff members all the time that they're actually practicing these three simple steps and they're actually losing weight. Um, I actually even had um, one of our staff members. She had bariatric surgery uh, about 10 years ago. She lost the weight. The weight actually came back because uh, she had not really done the, the lifestyle changes. And then she started following these three simple steps. And again, it worked for her, you, even though the, the surgery in the past had not worked. Yeah, Let, let's acknowledge that changing lifestyle modifying lifestyle is not easy for anybody, right? We're all hardwired from probably most of our lives. Um, some of us, like me, you know, when you're when you're younger, we were actually guilted into having to eat everything on our plate, right? It's like, oh, you can't, they, we weren't even allowed to leave the table unless we ate everything. And now it's like, you know, you, you're full, don't eat, just leave it there. Don't worry, take it home, have it tomorrow, whatever you want to do, but don't eat it just because it's there. That's a tough one, right? It's the guilt side of it. And I think we have to approach it with a stepwise manner. You know, you don't have to do, you know, if we're eating 60 to 70% of our calories from ultra processed foods, you don't have to cut down to zero right away. I would say make it a stepwise uh, fashion. The sugar, cut it down slowly, gradually, you can do it. And again, ultra processed foods, slowly cut them yeah. down. Vegetable oils, you got to go cold turkey. Well, I have a couple more questions for you. One of them I was going to say till after, but the vegetable oil is interesting. So... I understand if you probably looked it up in the dictionary, an avocado is probably a fruit more than a vegetable because it's got the big seed, right? But because most of us would think of avocado as a vegetable, and I know avocado oil is actually a healthy choice. Plus, you can heat it up to higher temperatures, it doesn't burn. So that I think that's a good choice. But but it's not all vegetables, right? I mean, it's just, you have to look at so, what it so, is. So, so the ones that I described, the eight, those are the bad ones, but yeah, avocado oil, and, yeah, oil yeah, is absolutely. good. Avocado oil and olive oil are good. The yeah. only thing I would um, tell people to, uh, you know, when you buy it, make sure you buy it from a reputable place, uh, the olive oil and avocado oil. I've seen a lot of studies showing that it does get tainted uh, with the vegetable oils because Okay, good you can point. Make a lot of money. So, so this is where uh, be careful good. where you buy it. Buy it from a reputable place. Those two. Great point. I wanted to point out to another uh, food choice that people could make pretty easily. That's a staple in most people's cupboards: peanut butter. So, if you had a a peanut butter that is organic, I guess it might be better. You can talk about that with me. But a peanut butter that's just peanuts and or salt. Again, you can argue whether salt's good or not, but it does add a lot of flavor to it when you're not having anything else. But if if you have no sugar, and there are they're more expensive, but there are peanut butters that are just peanuts or peanuts and salt, and they taste just as good and way better for you, right? Right, and this is where we really have to look at the labels. Uh, I think peanut butters there might be like ten to fifteen types that you can buy at the supermarket, but buy the one that doesn't have the added sugar. Or uh, sadly, a lot of uh, them do have some vegetable oils added to it. So we yeah, really have to look at the labels. Yeah. The label is key. And again, sugar. Uh, this is one that I like to tell all my patients, uh, the grams of sugar. Easy calculation is you take the grams of sugar, you're going to divide it by four, and that's how many teaspoons are in there. So we really have to calculate how many teaspoons are we getting. And normally in our body at any one given, uh, any one time, all of our blood has one teaspoon of sugar in circulation. And our body wants to maintain homeostasis. So when you're uh, drinking a soda, that's adding, uh, I forgot the, I didn't really calculate it, maybe 20, 20 teaspoons. <laughs> It's is so it, your body's going to work over over time to so, really so maintain. Is a is a is a soda more 
the same or less as a big glass of fresh squeezed orange juice that people think is healthy? They're, they're similar. Uh, yeah, you're getting a, a whole bunch of... Uh, 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 yeah, or apple juice as another. Yeah, one. and this is affecting the liver. And this is where I would actually... One thing I uh, it just brought to my mind is I see even kids that I'm diagnosing with fatty livers as young as 10 I've diagnosed. Uh, one of my colleagues reached out to me. He knows I'm doing this three simple steps. He reached out and he told me that he saw someone seven year old. Yeah. So one one thing is when we're when we're our kids are doing a good job when we're taking them to any kind of fast food we have to be careful what we're giving them as a treat. The two ingredients that is really um, harmful for the liver is uh, the soda, and the other one is the the fries that we're getting. When the fries are made in vegetable oils, that really ramps up. So there's actually toxicologists that have done studies. Large fries at any fast food chain toxins are equal to 25 cigarettes. Is I what hate that you're saying that because some of us really love fries, but but you're right, <laughs> of course. But you, you can get, there's places that make their fries in beef tallow, uh, or you can fry them at home in avocado oil, like you mentioned. So you can get healthier fry. And, and this is where I'm seeing there's a demand from the public to change. Yeah. And actually, the industry is changing. So I'm seeing the change. Uh, I think the more awareness there is, the more the industry will change. So was this was not one of my questions for you, but back in the day when they used, which tasted fabulous, was peanut oil. Was peanut oil healthier than some of the other oils because, because of the type of fat it is? Was it actually a healthier choice? The unrefined peanut oil uh, I've seen is uh, healthier, but when they um, when they have it in the restaurants now, they actually have to get the allergens out, you know, because there's a lot of peanut yeah. allergies. So it is going through some of the refining process. So I would say uh, the refined peanut oil I've seen is in the middle, not the really bad, not the really good. So that's okay. something in the middle. So thanks. You uh, didn't know I've had so many questions for you today, huh? <laughs> I got that's great. That's great to hear. I just have one more I wanted to ask you, and and it's only because I've heard it at a lot of meetings too. So as you mentioned, with are the cardiometabolic. Um, comorbidities that people have, like uh, um, a, a high cholesterol, like, um, uh, uh, well, the obesity is part of it, type 2 diabetes. So um, I think the consensus now is this multidisciplinary approach that that when you go to each of the specialists, they can tick off each of the metabolic comorbidities. So if somebody has a high A1C, treat them with metformin or whatever and reduce the A1C. If they have high cholesterol, uh, uh, then then give them the drugs that are appropriate for them. Is that right? Because you we all have issues, right? You said yeah, I think this normal. Is... You said you said, oh, this is the ideal situation, but very few of us are perfect. Uh, maybe you are, but we're, the rest of us have to have some other <laughs> issues. <laughs> no, this is where I think, uh, yeah, we cannot treat these things in silos. We have to come together and really get to the root cause. And I think this is where uh, a really great number uh, to see your uh, cardiometabolic health is triglyceride to HDL ratio. Experts believe that is a great number. So you take, you're gonna get a fasting cholesterol level done. You're gonna take the triglycerides divided by the HDL. You're gonna come up with the ratio. So less than 2.5 is what you're aiming for. And I would say less than 1.5 is for African-Americans. And I would actually say everyone should aim for less than 1.5 to be optimal. And how, how are you going to fix that ratio? If you have high triglycerides, you're going to cut down your carbs. That will reduce the top number. And then you're going to increase your healthy fats, including saturated fats, to bring the HDL up. And that's the diet. We actually, this is where we really need to understand the diet to help our cardiometabolically unhealthy patients because the only way you can fix it is through diet. There's no medication to really fix that ratio. It is really through the diet itself. Okay, so if you give her email out to everybody, we'll all send you our blood uh, markers and you can let us know what we need to do next with your advice. Uh, thanks so much. It's so incredibly helpful. You shared a lot of information. I know for sure, I don't have to ask. It is going to be helpful for so many people and we really appreciate your time today. 
thanks thanks for having me and then yeah the three simple steps i would say i want everyone that's hearing this to really go out and tell 10 tell 10 other people because i want this uh, simple message to really have the exponential expansion so uh, doctors and uh, patients so share this video with everybody you know and even people you don't know right <laughs> or just give the three simple steps because it's so simple I, I mean you could just really say this uh Simply avoid vegetable oils, low carbs, and intermittent fasting. Very easy. Uh, easy to say, but uh, yeah, do it in a stepwise <laughs> manner, and really you can build, build up one step, towards it. One step at a time. Thank you so much. Much appreciated. Thank you. Thank you for having me.